welcome back to my channel today we're going to learn how to make this beautiful ruffle granny stitch shorts and these are supposed to pair up with our format uh, project which is the cropped sleeves the front tag granny stitch cropped sleeves and if you haven't yet checked out the tutorial make sure after this one you go and check it out so that you can have a matching set this is the same exact design but just in a different color and you can make any shades of your choice but for this one i did two two rows of each and every shade you can see two rows of dark brown and then two rows of nude and then two rows of light brown and then i kept repeating that again and again until i got something as pretty as this as you can see in this photo so it's the same exact design but uh, i'm going to demonstrate with a plain color so that uh, the visuals can be as clear as possible especially for beginners if you would like the written pattern it's already available on all my online shops and you can check the link in the description box below so that you can grab a copy and also support my craft thank you so for the materials i am using the same exact yarn as i used for the sleeves and that's marina double knit yarn which is a dk yarn and uh it's a hundred percent acrylic and um uh, i used a little over a ball so you need to have about one and a half balls of this and you will need a five millimeter crochet hook a pair of scissors a darning needle and a measuring tape to take your hip measurement the hip measurement is the one that we are going to consider for this tutorial so let's dive right in you're going to grab your yarn and you're going to make a magic ring for a magic ring you're going to hold your yarn like this twist it over your two fingers and then grab the working yarn this one and then hold so after holding here you're going to make a chain of one and just fasten it off this doesn't count as anything so you're going to start off with a chain of three which counts as our very first double crochet and then you're going to go into the same magic ring with two more double crochets so this is the first one and the double crochet is yarn over insert your hook pull up a loop you have three loops on your hook yarn over pull through two and yarn over pull through two so you will have a total of three double crochets including the chain three at the beginning that counted as our very first double crochet so after this you're going to make a chain of two go into the magic ring with three more double crochets okay make a chain of two three double crochets into the same magic ring okay after this you're going to make a chain of two and then you are going to make your last group of three double crochets into the magic ring all right so right now we have a total of four groups of three double crochets so we have one two three and four so from here you're going to get the tail of the magic ring and close it off so pull on it so that it closes that circle that was in the middle we shall come back to it and weave it in and secure it later on so after this you should be having a total of one two and three chain two spaces for row one let's go on to row two you're going to make a chain of four which counts as a double crochet chain one turn your work and into the chain two space you're going to place three double crochets chain two and three more double crochets all right after this you're going to make a chain of one and then into the chain two space you're going to place three double crochets chain two 
and three more double crochets into the same exact chain two space. Just like that. And then you're going to make a chain of one. Into the chain two space, you're going to place three double crochets. Chain two and three more double crochets. And after this, uh, you're going to make a chain of one and then go on top of the very first chain three of the row and you're going to place a double crochet on top of the chain three. So this should balance exactly what we have on this side onto this side, as you can see. This is the top part of the panel and this is the bottom part of the panel. So let's go ahead. You're going to make a chain of three which counts as our very first double crochet. Turn your work. Two more double crochets into the chain one space to make a total of three double crochets since the chain three counts as a double crochet. So after this, you're going to make a chain of one. Um, into the chain two space, you're going to place three double crochets, chain two, and three more double crochets into the same space. So this is going to create our corners, basically. So after this chain one, this is a chain one space and each chain one space gets three double crochets. After this, you're going to make a chain of one and then each chain two space gets a shell. A shell is three double crochets. Chain two and three more double crochets into the same exact space. So for this tutorial, a shell is three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets, and a shell is only placed in the chain two spaces, unless stated otherwise, because this will change when it comes to the ruffle bit at the base of the shirts. So chain one, this is a chain one space, so it will get three double crochets. Chain one. This is a chain two space, so it will get a shell. All right. So after this, you're going to make a chain of one and into the chain four space, which is here, you're going to place three double crochets. One, two, and three. So that should balance what we have at the beginning of the row here. Remember we started with three double crochets, which is uh, the two double crochets and the chain three that counted as a double crochet. So we have the three double crochets at the end of the row. So make sure your work is balanced at all times. So let's go on to row four. You're going to start off with a chain of four. Turn your work and into the first chain one space you're going to place three double crochets chain one into the chain two space place a shell all right chain one into each chain one space, you only place three double crochets. So you can see here, this is a chain one space, so it will get three double crochets. And then you're going to make a chain of one. This is a chain one space, so it will only, it will also get uh, three double crochets. And then chain one, this is a chain two space, and it will get a shell. At this point, you should notice that the shells are placed on the corners of the panel and you should be having a total of three corners for your panel, excluding the edge corners, because we're not counting this, this as a corner because we don't place shells there. But we have this corner, we have this corner, and this corner where we place shells. So go all the way across, chain one, three double crochets into the next chain one space, chain one, three double crochets into the next chain one space. 
chain one into the chain two space which is a corner you're going to place a shell three double crochets chain two and three more double crochets into the same space so this is what you'll have chain one into the chain one space you're going to place three double crochets chain one and you're going to go on top of the very first the last stitch of the previous row which is the chain three on top of the chain three you're going to place a double crochet after your chain one of course so this is what you'll have so we're just going to repeat the two rows rows three and four row three starts with a chain of three and then you turn your work and you place two more double crochets into the very first chain one space to make a total of three double crochets and then you just go ahead and work your row placing three double crochets in each chain one space and a shell in each corner and making sure that we separate each and everything with a chain one so after your three double crochets chain one a shell into the next chain two space which is supposed to be a corner so this pattern is very very easy as long as you know how to make the granny stitch this should be a walkover for you and i think for the people who have already tried out the sleeves this should be a piece of cake for you the only difference here is uh this project works up much faster than the sleeves um this took me about two to three hours to make the full shot. So go all the way across doing what's needed, making sure that you maintain the corners, as you can see what I'm doing here. This is a corner, so it will get three double crochets, chain two and three more double crochets. So we have so many projects using the granny stitch and you can check the link in the description box I'll be leaving some projects for you to try out using this stitch because we have over 30 projects using the same exact stitch but different designs All right, so I'm coming to the end of this row, which is supposed to be row five. And I've placed my last three double crochets into the last chain for space. And you can see we have the same thing happening at, at both ends of our panel. So you're going to just keep alternating between rows three and four, three and four, until um, the length here is half of your hip measurement when slightly stretched so i'm going to keep working and i'll be back to show you what um how many rows that i did for my size uh the size that i'm considering is size 39 to 40 hip measurement so i'll be back to show you uh how many rows that i did and how the panel will look like as we grow it Alright guys, so I went ahead to do a total of 12 rows and um, let's see the measurement that we have. You can see if I put my measuring tape across, we have a total of 17 inches and we want a total of 19 to 20 inches because we want to consider uh, a hip size of 39 to 40. So I'll consider a stretch up to 20 when slightly stretched, just like that. And then uh, from here, you're going to chain one and cut your yarn. Now, this will be the very first panel. And for the second one, you're just going to rewind the video and make a second panel less by one row of your very first panel. So whatever number of rows that you have for your first panel, for your second one, make one row less. So in my case, I have 12 rows for my first panel. That means for my second panel, I'm going to work until I have a total of 11 rows and I'll come back to show you how to join everything. All right guys, so I'm on the second last row. I could say second last row, yes. 
of the second panel so uh, for the first panel you can go ahead and chain one and cut your yarn this is the first panel by the way so <clears throat> we got done with it now this is the second panel that we are introducing and I am on the second last row so um, I'm going to make my last row while joining onto what we already have so I'm going to make a chain of three turn my work but this time we are bringing along the first panel so make your chain of three turn your work and then insert your hook into this space of the first panel pull through make your other chain because it's supposed to be a chain of four so you're going to place your three double crochets into the next chain one space so look at what we have we've joined our very first space so after this you're going to make a chain of one remove your hook insert it into the next space of the first panel pull through and then three double crochets into the chain one space of the second panel so remember here we have 11 rows so far and this is our 12th so our 12th is joining onto what we already have so these are 12 rows and this one stopped at 11 rows and the 12th row of the second panel is joining onto the 12th row of the first panel so from here you're going to chain one remove your hook go into the next space pull through and then three double crochets into the next chain one space chain one remove your hook pull through if you know the join as you go method using the granny square stitch or the granny stitch this should be a walkover for you but we have several projects that you can try out using this stitch and i'll be linking them in the description box below i have a full playlist of granny stitch projects that uh, you can try out from my channel so we're in the corner and we're placing three double crochets chain one this time chain one remove your hook insert your hook into the corner of this side pull through chain one more because it's supposed to be a chain of two so after this you're going to go into the same space with three more double crochets so look at what we have at the moment we've joined this side and it looks so seamless it looks like well planned and no funny joining so uh, after this you're going to make a chain of one and three double crochets into the next now this part is not joined because these are the spaces that are going to create the leg holes so we are just going on with our uh, three double crochets, chain one, three double crochets into the next chain one space, chain one, three double crochets into the next, just like that until we get to the next corner. So let me rush through this and I will show you what to do next when I get to the next corner. So remember we are working on the second panel creating our very final row on the second panel so we are almost at the corner and um, all right so we are at the corner here which is supposed to be the exact middle of the second panel. Now, uh, what we are going to do is connect this corner onto the corner, the middle corner of the second panel. So this is exactly what we have. We have this part and then we have this part. So you're going to make a chain of one, sorry, three double crochets into the corner which is the chain to space and instead of chaining two you're going to chain one remove your hook and then fold over your work so that the first panel is right below 
this second panel because the second panel is the one on top so go below the first panel like this and grab this loop pull through and then chain one more because it has to be a chain of two and then three double crochets into the same exact chain to space and what we've done here is join the corners but also created our very first leg hole of our shirt or pants so once you're done with this you're going to go all the way across until the next corner and i'll show you what to do so chain one three double crochets into the chain one space chain one three double crochets and repeat that until the next corner where we shall be um attaching this side to this side I've reached the next corner and I am placing my three double crochets and instead of chaining two I'll chain one remove my hook and go below the corner of the first panel pull through chain one more and three more double crochets into the same exact space so that completes the corner but at the same time we have created our second leg hole so this is what the shirts look like at the moment we have one leg hole here and then this is the second leg hole and this is the exact middle of the shorts and now we are going on all the way up chain one attach your hook into the next chain one space on the opposite side and then three double crochets into the next chain one space so make sure your stitches are tight enough at this point So just like we did for the first side, we are just joining the side of the pants or the shorts and getting um, a seam line of some sort to join the sides together. So that's how we do the join as you go method on the granny stitch and this is exactly what we have so chain one attach and then three more double crochets okay then chain one attach into the very last space which is the chain four like that and then place a double crochet into the very last stitch and this is what you should have now the shorts should be uh formed the general shape of the shorts should be done at this point and you can even go ahead and try it on to make sure that these shorts actually fit you now uh i think we should first make the waistband or the waistline of the shorts since we are on the upper side of the shorts so let's go ahead and do just that right once we have the general structure of the shorts now we're going to create the waistband and to do that you're going to make a chain of two which doesn't count as a double crochet you're going to go in each and every row placing two double crochets in each and every row two double crochets all the way around So as you can see, this is one row and I'm placing two double crochets into that space. And then going into the next row, which is this one, and placing two double crochets into that row as well. So go all the way around doing this and I'll meet you back at the beginning of the round here. All right guys, so after your very last stitch of the very first round of the waistband, let me just go ahead. Um, my yarn had kind of unraveled. Yes, yeah, so after your very last stitch, you're going to go into the first double crochet of the round and place a slip stitch just like we have here 
now we are going to start creating a ribbed effect on our waistband so you're going to make a chain of three and then a front post double crochet a front post you just go around the double crochet like that so front post double crochet into the next stitch and back post double crochet into the next stitch so just push the stitch to the back and make a normal double crochet just like that so we are going to alternate between the front post and the back post double crochet all the way around front post back post so you can't see it here yet it's not yet prominent but as we go along uh, the stitch will start being very evident so keep alternating between the front post and back post double crochet until you make it all the way to the beginning of the round so you can see the ribbed effect some stitches are pushing to the back and some stitches are popping at the front so you can see that texture on the waistband so go all the way around i'll meet you back at this point okay guys i've made it all the way around and i'm placing my very last stitch and it's a back post double crochet into the very last stitch and after this i'll place a slip stitch into the very first double crochet of the round chain three and place a front post double crochet in the first front post double crochet and a back post double crochet in the back post double crochet so you're just aligning your stitches one front post in each front post and one back post in each back post so go all the way around and we're going to repeat this round until you have the thickness of the waistband that you want so i believe i'm going to do about four rounds for the waistband including the very first one that didn't have the ridges so after this one i'll just do one more round just to get a good thickness of the waistband and you can see how the ribbing looks like the ribbing of the waistband so go all the way around and then do as many rounds as you need for your shorts to get your desired waistband thickness and also that the waistband also helps us to pull up the shorts a little bit so that they are not low cut they are more like high waisted pants or shirts so let me continue to work mine and i'll meet you back when i have my desired thickness all right guys i ended up doing a total of one two three and four rounds for the waistband and i also went ahead to do just a normal chain this chain is going to help us to um, gather the waistband together so what you're going to do is identify the front side of the shorts and you're going to go into the second last round of the waistband and go in and out of every two stitches in and out of every two stitches weaving in this uh, drawstring just like that all the way around so that uh, it can gather the waistband together and we can get a snatched look on our final shorts okay
all right so we've made it all the way back to the center of the shorts and this is where you will be placing your knot just like this that's what uh, the drawstring will look like let me just cut off the extra yarn this is what the knot, the knot will look like after tying everything now we are going to go ahead and work on our uh leg extensions i've already worked my very first one you can see the ruffle and also the extension from the very final round the very final row of the two panels that we worked earlier on so we have this part finished and i'm going to teach you how to do that on this side so grab your yarn So assuming you haven't yet worked any side, you're going to go into the center of the two pieces, just there, in the exact middle of the shorts. And you're going to attach your yarn in a way that you're working in the opposite direction of the previous row. So here, and you're going to go into that chain space, attach your yarn, just like this. And then you're going to make a chain of three, one, two, three, which counts as our very first double crochet and then double crochet into the same space and then double crochet into the next space that will create a total of three double crochets placed in this middle section don't mind about this it won't even show just like we have here so after that you're going to chain one three double crochets into the next um, chain one space chain one three double crochets into the next chain one space and you're going to repeat this all the way around the leg hole because at this point we have already separated the legs and we know we have the right side and the wrong uh, the the left side of the legs sorry every time i say right <laughs> i keep thinking that the opposite is wrong instead of left so just continue walking around until you get back to the beginning of your round and I'll show you what to do. So this is going to ex extend our legs, our leg extensions. This is either going to make the shorts longer or shorter depending on the number of rounds that you do at this point all right guys so when you get to this point where uh, the two panels meet as you can see here we're going to just do the same exact thing that we did on this side here in the middle section so you're going to prepare for a double crochet after a chain of one of course so you're going to go into the very first space with two double crochets and then into the space on the opposite side on the second panel you're going to place one double crochet which will make a total of three double crochets in this spot then from here you're going to just go ahead and chain one two do uh, three double crochets into the next chain one space and continue walking around i'll meet you back at the end of your round Alright, so we've made it all the way around and I've placed my last three double crochets into the very last chain one space of the round. So from here, you're going to make a chain of one and slip stitch into the very first um, double crochet of the round, which should be at the top of the chain three. And then pull through. So that's a slip stitch. And this is what it has created. It has still created the chain one space that we are leaving every after three double crochets so we're going on to the next row you can still do the other approach of um, 
Okay, let's just go ahead. You're going to make a chain of three, which counts as our very first double crochet of the round. Then turn your work. Make sure your oar is working in the opposite direction of the previous row or round. Then from here, you're going to go into the chain one space with three double crochets or only two double crochets because the chain three counts as one of the double crochets. So when it comes to the very first one, you're only going to place two double crochets so that you have a total of three double crochets at this point. Then you're going to chain one, three double crochets into the next chain one space. And you're going to repeat this all the way around until you come back to the beginning of the round. And after your last three double crochets here, you'll make a chain of one and slip stitch on top of the chain three, which counted as a double crochet. So keep working back and forth and make sure you turn your work at every round, at the beginning of every round after chaining three. You turn your work so that you're always working in the opposite direction of the previous round. And I'll meet you back to show you what to do next. Okay guys, so I ended up doing a total of four rounds of the extension you can see from here one two three and this is the fourth so i'm placing my slip stitch into the very first stitch of the round and now i'm going to create my ruffles at the base of the shorts just like we see on this photo here and yeah so make sure your ruffle round is worked on the wrong side of your work so you're going to make a chain of three which counts as a double crochet and turn your work and you can see i'm working on the wrong side of the work inside the shirt and i'm going to place three double crochets chain two and sorry um yes after your chain two you're going to go into the same exact space i was just cross checking with the first design just like that so we are literally creating shells into these spaces so after this chain one and then a shell into the next chain one space so three double crochets chain two and three more double crochets into the same exact space and you can see the ruffles have already started forming at this point so go all the way around after a shell chain one a shell into the next chain one space And a shell is three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. Don't forget that. Chain one, a shell into the next. And I'll meet you back at the beginning of the round. This is round five of the leg extension. And then the final round will be the one that is worked uh, on the right side. So that is my plan. That's why the second last round is worked on the wrong side. So look at the ruffles already. We don't want them to be so pronounced or so dramatic, but just something enough, cute enough to be at the boundary of our shirts. So I've gone all the way around and I'm placing my very last shell into the last chain one space of the round. Okay, and you're going to see how beautiful the ruffles look around the leg hole. So after this, you're going to chain one and slip stitch into the very first 
double crochet of the round so look how pretty this is the edging so we're going to make our final round so at this point you're going to make a chain of three which counts as a double crochet turn your work and into each chain one space you're going to place a double crochet into each chain two space you will place three double crochets and into each stitch you will place one double crochet so start with the chain one space with one double crochet into each stitch you're going to go in there with one double crochet into each just like that and then into the chain three space you're going to place the chain two space you're going to place three double crochets and that's what we are going to do all the way around so go all the way around placing your stitches as instructed before so into each stitch one double crochet into each chain one space one double crochet into each stitch one double crochet just like that into each chain two space three double crochets just like that so go all the way around creating your ruffles this is going to make them more pronounced and it will give it a finished look when it comes to the edge just like we have for this one this is exactly what we did for this one so go all the way around until the beginning of the round Hey guys i've made it all the way around and i'm going to slip stitch into the very first double crochet of the round chain one and cut my yarn so this is exactly what we have the ruffle has been created just like we wanted it and you're going to go ahead and make your second part your second leg uh leg extension so i'm going to go ahead and do the same exact process so all right guys so you're going to just rewind the video and repeat the same exact process that you did for your first leg onto your second leg extension and this is exactly what we are going to have um i don't know if my view is great i feel like uh the camera is too zoomed in so i'll zoom out a bit so that you can see exactly what's taking place now the next step that we're going to do is to weave in all our ends you're going to grab your darning needle i have mine here and we're going to weave in all our tails so the first thing that you're going to do is to make sure all the tails are on the wrong side so at this point we are done with the bottom part of the shirts we are done with the waistband we are done with the drawstring and the main body of the shirts so the only thing that's left is to do the final touches so grab your darning needle and start weaving in all your tails and i'll be showing you what everything looks like in the end All right guys, so we are done and the only thing left is to attach tassels to our shirts. I'll be doing that off camera because I already have a video of how to make tassels and I'll be linking it on the screen so that you guys can give it a try if that's a, an approach that you would love to learn. And that's basically it. So let's see our final product. <laughs> 